extremely long focal length. So if you are an owner of the Star or the Star Adventurer, I advise you to see this video until the end in order to understand how this circle works. Also because these circles are worth the half of the go-to. With this circle you can measure changing in right ascension and this, if you have a protractor for your declination, and I explain in a, in a post that is linked below in the description of this video, I explain how to do the protractor, then you can, with any kind of instrument you can throw on this mount, on this tracker, you can frame any kind of target, visible or not visible, large or small, in 30 seconds or less. So what are those circles and how do you use them? Okay, so here, fixed to the body of the Star Adventurer, there is the graduation circle for the time of the day. This goes from five o'clock in the evening until seven o'clock in the morning. Then we have connected to the polar scope, uh, rotating with it, we have the graduation circles for the date of the year. Every number here is a month, and every mark represents an interval of two days. Now, if you hold, grab hold the polar scope so that it does not rotate, you can put a bit of friction and you can still rotate the date circle with respect to time. And uh, this is what you do in order to set your local, your position on Earth. So when we polar align the Star Adventurer using circle, we need to know where we are. We need to know to tell the Star Adventurer where we are because uh, when we manipulate the wedge in order to polar align, basically we are working in altitude and azimuth. And if we do those coordinates for polaris for the polar for the celestial pole, they change. Uh, with our location on Earth, and they change in time. This is why we need to tell the Star Adventurer where we are and what time it is. Now, the starting point of this story is this line here that is engraved on the polar scope, and this is the meridian indicator. Now, we have to align this meridian indicator with this scale, this little scale here, that represent the offset of our location from the local standard time meridian. If you want to know, to know more about that, I have a post that is linked in the description below. For the sake of this video, let's just say that to find the longitude of your local standard time meridian, you have to take your time zone, uh, GMT plus or GMT minus whatever, forget about any daylight saving, this is a man-made stuff, nature doesn't care, just consider the, 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 the standard time, the GMT plus whatever, without daylight saving, and multiply this time zone value for 15. So, give you an example, I live in GMT plus 1. This time of the day we have daylight saving, so if I look at my clock right now, it's, me, it's uh, 12 o'clock, a.m. So it's 12 o'clock p.m. and now this is daylight saving applied so my GMT plus one would be actually 11 o'clock in the morning. So it's 11 o'clock in the morning I am in GMT uh, plus one. My local standard time meridian will be 1 times 15 so it will be 15 degrees and because I am plus one in GMT plus one, it means that I am eastward of Greenwich. And so my local standard, the longitude for my local standard time meridian will be 15 degrees east with respect to Greenwich. Now I live in Brussels, the longitude of Brussels is four degrees east with respect to Greenwich. In this scale, I have to set the position of my location with respect to the local standard time meridian that we have calculated before. So the longitude of my local standard time meridian for GMT plus one is 15 degrees east. Because I'm in Brussels, I am four degrees east, both this value with respect to Greenwich. That means that I am 11 degrees west of my um, local standard time meridian because I am closer to Greenwich than my local standard time meridian. And I'm closer by, fifth, by 11 degrees. So what I would do is to take, to grab hold the polar scope and rotate the date circle until I can line up 
uh, I hope you can see it, I can line up the, the meridian indicator that is here with 11 degrees uh, west. So yeah, you can see now, 11 degrees west. So now I set the Star Adventure for my location and I said before that is um, it's 12, so it's 11. The date is July, July the 2nd, and so I will put, well, let's suppose I am imaging at midnight. So then we make things easy. Midnight, I have daylight saving, so if I look at my clock in this midnight, the, G, the, G, the standard time is 11 p.m. So today is July the 2nd, and I will align July the 2nd to 23 hour. Something like so. July the 2nd is there and 23 hour is, is there. So in this way, I have set the Star Adventurer to the proper time and the proper position on Earth in order to align the mount to the celestial pole. And what I have to do, I hope I can show you at least uh, let's say maybe you can s you can have a glimpse of the yes of the reticle down there. So when we do that, we oriented the reticle inside the polar scope in a particular way, and all we need to do now is to put polaris where we see the six of the clock. That's not six o'clock. So that's not like the six o'clock of a, a clock that is hung on the wall is where is the number six written on the reticle. You put Polaris on the mark that is in, uh, correspond to the six in the reticle. And in this way, you have Polar align your mount. If you do that, enough time you will take like, I don't know, two minutes to, polar align, to set up the Star Adventure and to Polar align the mount properly. So I hope I have explained enough good enough what these circles are, why you should at least understand how they work. And uh, if you want to know more, don't hesitate to read the post that I have linked below in the description. And see you next time with another Astropeer.